Hi, and welcome back to Ask a Monk. After a long break, I'm back and I'll be trying to give uh, regular teachings and uh, regular updates to the Ask a Monk program. I've got lots of questions to answer now, so hopefully I'll get around to some of them in the near future. I'm settling down here in Sri Lanka, so you're going to see uh, hopefully some of the uh, Sri Lankan countryside in these next videos. So the next question comes from Foster's Blue, who says, I find my interest in reading and focus in Zen, also Tibetan Buddhism and Christianity, interest in Islam and Sufi writings. Paths cause me to wonder if I will have to choose, or may I learn from various paths. Um, it's a good, really good question. It's one that was asked uh, quite often in the Buddhist time, because like today in that time there were many different paths, many different teachers. And I think uh, it, it's important to uh, to agree that I think men, most of us can agree that it's unhealthy and unuseful to dogmatically cling to a specific path and say this path is right and, and all others are wrong. And this isn't what the Buddha did. The Buddha himself was, uh, was, a, was a, a very open-minded person who said that um, some of the things that other teachers teach we agree with. Some of the things that other teachers teach we don't agree with. And so he was never uh, going to dogmatically say only my teachings are right and, and, and every other teaching is wrong. The point is that you can find wis wisdom everywhere and as you say the, 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 all of these, these paths have something interesting and, and something true in them. So on the one hand it's, a, it, it's obviously wrong to uh, dogmatically stick to a specific path. On the other hand um, what you often see is, is nowadays uh, as we start to learn more about the various religious traditions and as they come into uh, contact, you'll find people trying to smooth things over and make things easy by saying that all traditions are the same or all traditions have some equal value. And this the Buddha didn't agree with. And this was one of the things that the Buddha tried very clearly to, um, to, to, to uh, rectify this belief that all, any teacher who said they were enlightened was enlightened and so on, or, or all teachings um, were, should be given an equal footing. Um, and this is what we've done today, we've, we've established the various religious traditions up as the world's major religions and we don't want to uh, make any distinction between them, <clears throat> which of course is unhealthy and improper we should see them for what they are and, and scientifically um, take them apart and, and, and look at them in all their pieces and come to see what are their strengths, their strengths and their weaknesses and compare them. And this is really what I would recommend is that you compare objectively the various religious traditions. What the Buddha said was that if you do this, that uh, you, you, you'll come to see that his teaching is the most deep, profound, and the one that leads to the ultimate goal. So this is a very bold statement, and it's one that I would say most religious, religious traditions make. So the Buddha was not unlike other teachers in saying that his was, was the best. But what he said is that you, rather than accepting his teaching dogmatically, this was uh, an inappropriate thing to do. One should examine objectively all of the religious traditions and decide which one is best. The Buddha simply said that you'll come to see that the most comprehensive, uh, objective, scientific and practical in terms of um, verifiable in terms of bringing results was the Buddha's teaching. So we should never simply um, try to pick and choose from various religious traditions. We should understand that it could very well be that some of the teachers or the leaders of these various religious traditions were not on the same level. That just because someone is the leader of a religion or the leader of, of some group or because 
uh, it is well well liked by the by the majority of the people in the world or, or followed by a large number of people doesn't mean that it is going to doesn't mean that it is true it's possible that people are deluding themselves it's possible that that the majority of people are following the wrong path and objectively and scientifically we should never take something simply on faith or or, or even on um, the the acceptance by the majority we should study it examine it and um, try to see wh where it leads and and what it's what it brings and, and practice it and um, see for ourselves what it leads to the the, the, the point being that if you pick and choose from various traditions, now supposing that uh, certain teachings are not in line with the truth, supposing that there are certain teachings that are leading you in the wrong direction, then they're going to come in conflict with those teachings that are leading you to the truth, leading you to reality, leading you to understanding, to enlightenment. So uh, rather than, than, than simply picking and choosing, one should eventually um, either make up one's mind that none of the teachings, no teacher, and none of the teachings that exist in the world lead one to the ultimate realization of the truth and, and have a full and complete path for me to follow. And therefore I should make do with what I have and find the true path myself. Uh, or accept that one of the teachings, one of the paths that, one of the teachers that uh, has taught since the beginning of time did have the right answer and did teach the, the, the way out of suffering and the way to true realization of, of reality and understanding and enlightenment and so on and, and follow that path once you have explored and understood and examined because if you find such a path then there's no reason to, to take from other paths um, except you know, except sort of ancillary in a, in a you know, uh, to to sort of uh, somehow you know, add something to the the main path, R rather than, than than going about coming and going from one path to the other. You have the right path in front of you. Why would you um, why why would you pick and choose when uh, quite likely these other paths that you've decided that are are, are not leading to ultimate reality and ultimate understanding are um, are just going to conflict with this one. Now, it might be that some people say that there are different paths to the same goal and I'm willing to, um, to accept this, that there very well could be different paths to the same goal, but it's important not to, to get too caught up in this sort of idea, different paths to the same goal, which we hear a lot, because, you know, it's not really, we're not talking about a mountain where you can approach it from all different types of sides, we're talking about reality, and reality is one, there can only be one reality, either it's true or it's not, either it's reality or it's not, there can be a million falsehoods, infinite number of, of false paths, right? and this is why we see such a diversity of paths, because we're seeing a lot of paths that are teaching something based on speculation that there is this, this God or this heaven or, or, or so on and so on and as a result they, 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 they conflict because uh, because of the multiplicity of, of, of falsehood, of, of illusion, of mental creation things that have nothing to do with reality can be multiple but reality has to by its very nature, by its very definition be one, be that which is real and the truth has to be one, so the realization of the truth and true peace and happiness um, has to come through understanding and, and through somehow um, harmonizing oneself with this reality so that one acts based on understanding, based on those acts and speech and thought that will lead one to peace, happiness and freedom from suffering. So. Whereas there may be many different religious traditions that are saying the same thing in different, in different ways, it's quite more likely that many of them are, and, and as we see, many of them are teaching um, the falsehood, are teaching something based on faith or based on illusion. So, so they may have something that, that is beneficial, um, but they, they, the core doctrine or the, the core theory or, or dogma 
um, is, is based on a, a supposition or, or a, a belief and not based on ultimate reality. So I would say don't believe any, any one path as being the truth just dogmatically, but don't pick and choose uh, unless your plan is to eventually create or find one path for yourself that, that is going to lead you to peace, happiness and freedom from suffering. And the other thing is don't, um, I, I would not accept a postmodernist view of, of things where you say um, what is good for me is good for me or, or what I think is good is good. And just because we uh, agree with something or something agrees with us, therefore it is right for us. This is the final warning that I would give that um, picking and choosing is nice when um, when you're learning or when you're trying to uh, figure out what sort of a path you're looking for and, and what what is the what are the differences between the paths and trying to find a framework for the path. But if eventually all you're doing is simply uh, augmenting or, or verifying your own beliefs, your own views, your own opinions, your own ego, really. Um, and picking up things simply because they agree with your way of life, agree with the things that you you are attached to, or you cling to, or you believe in, then uh, th then there's no spiritual development at all. You're simply um, reifying your your ego, your your defilements, your um, attachments your clinging state of mind and you're not learning to understand some you're not broadening your horizons, you're not developing spiritually at all. So eventually you're going to have to examine your own beliefs and and your own views and and, and hold them up against the various religious traditions and come to see uh, which one is objectively True, which one objectively lead, does lead to peace, happiness, freedom from suffering, spiritual development, enlightenment, and so on. So I uh, hope that helped. Um, and just a caution not to not to pick and choose. It's uh, the spiritual path is not a buffet. It's something that you have to dive into and follow to your utmost, uh, and and really have to give up all of all of the things that you believe in, all of the things that you hold on to, eventually you're going to have to let go of everything so that you can come to be free totally and completely. And so as a result, you really do need to pick one specific path and, and follow it diligently, not going a short ways and then backing off and going up another path and then backing off. You're going to have to figure out which one, which path is right for you, whether it's some path that you've worked out on your own or whether it's one of the paths that uh, has been established that you realize is the truth and is based on reality and has a verifiable uh, goal and conclusion and has a, a detailed teaching that leads you to that conclusion which uh, I would recommend is the Buddhist teaching that's why I'm following it but uh, the other thing I would say is that you probably I would boast, I suppose, that you, you won't find such a, um, a claim in the other religions, where, whereas most paths will say something like this, or ours is the best, um, you won't find this um, objective uh, explanation where you say, that you find the one that is most uh, objective and most verifiable in the here and now and most scientific, and that's ours. You, You'll, you'll find instead where people say, believe this, this is what we believe, it's the truth, and, and if you don't believe it, this and this and this is going to happen. And, uh, and one that's based on inference or extrapolation, where you have some special experience and you say that's this God or that's that God or that's you know, heaven or, 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 or this realization or that realization. Um, the Buddhist teaching is purely scientific, it's something that uh, allows you to uh, realize the truth without extrapolating or, or jumping to any conclusion whatsoever. The conclusions that you'll draw will be verifiable and will be based on 
an exact one-to-one -one correlation with your experiences. When you experience something, you'll have the conclusion that, that that is so, it is like that, because you've experienced it, as opposed to extrapolating upon it. So my um, boast, I would say, of Buddhism is that it, uh, it is thus, and it is the teaching that is most complete and has the, 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 has the uh, most detailed and accurate and um, scientific um, teaching that, that it has verifiable results and leads to a verifiable goal and, and works for those who put their effort into it. So um, I guess ultimately my answer is no, you don't have to pick, you don't have to pick and choose in the end you're going to come to Buddhism if you've, if you've been objective and if you've come to one, come, if you've been honest with yourself that eventually you'll come to realize that what the Buddha was an enlightened being and that's anyone who is enlightened will teach these things because this is the truth so really the, the word Buddhism in fact is, um, is simply a word that means the teaching of the enlightened one so it's, the, the meaning is that this teaching is the teaching of those people who have for themselves come to realize the truth and it's not because of faith, it's not, uh, it's not a God that came down and told them these things or, or it wasn't given from anywhere, it was something that was realized for themselves. So this is therefore the point of saying that not all religious traditions are the same because if someone is not enlightened, they might still teach and they might still gain acceptance from a large number of people. But that doesn't mean that they're enlightened, that doesn't mean that their teaching is right and good. If they're not, or not yet enlightened, this is the criteria of being Buddhism or not Buddhism. Something is Buddhism if it's based on the teaching of someone who is totally, perfectly enlightened, someone who has come to realize the truth, the whole truth for themselves, and has come to be fully free from clinging, free from craving, free from suffering. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm sure it's not exactly what you're looking for. I know we like to pick and choose and, and uh, be free uh, in our pursuits. This is why there's the rise of postmodernism. Um, but there you have it. This is Ask a Monk. Thanks for tuning in and wish you all the best.